You ever watch or play something and then after you finish, you're just like, I need to talk to someone about this right now. Now, for me, that game was Going Under by Agro Crab Games. Unfortunately for me though, zero people that I know has played this gem of a game. So, you know what? Let's go do something about that. When I first played Going Under, my life felt like a corporate rogue life. I was working overtime in a sales marketing job and I couldn't get any marketing done as I kept getting assigned unrelated tasks such as data input, stock organizing, customer support, email, etc. Going Under is a corporate roguelite where Jackie is working overtime in an unpaid marketing internship where she can't get any marketing done as she keeps getting assigned unrelated tasks She's getting coffee, setting things on fire and customer su- <coughs> I mean killing monsters. Alright, big deal. I mean the game is obviously relatable. You know, I'm a millennial gamer so obviously they got my attention. R right? Well see, that's the crazy part. Although AgroCrab's marketing team should have had a red hot reticle in my forehead, but all I saw before the game's release was a clip from the Nintendo Indie World montage. Here's a quick glimpse at even more indie games. Those 10 seconds barely touched upon what makes the game memorable, namely its contemporary satire and addictive gameplay loop. Any person unhappy with authorities in their life, especially if you work an office job, owes it to themselves to play going under. It's aesthetic, relatable, and you'll find more validation here than with your friends. Trust me, complaining about work gets old real quick. Remember to leave a rating. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I took it upon myself to become an evangelist for the game. I believe in second chances. Now, I'm not talking about situations like we saw with the 2020s hit game Among Us. That game only really blew up because famous Twitch streamers picked up on it for the fun multiplayer when everyone was quarantining because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to give credits where credit is due though. The developers Inner Sloth did update the game with a tiny fan base for over two years and got it on every platform imaginable. And there is of course that off chance that they did partner with, you know, Soda Poppin and other famous streamers, but I don't really have any evidence of that. The type of second chances I am talking about is such as Cyberpunk 2077. When it came out, this game was universally hated and ridiculed on massive scale. Yet, through strategic content marketing, they managed to return to the world of good faith. For the record, I'm not praising the morals and the executives of CD Projekt Red. There was a good reason for what happened, but I have to credit the incredible job their marketing team did post-release. Each of the windows you see behind me here represents a bunch of workers in their third hour of overtime. Lucky for Among Us, they had a pandemic to keep people inside. Lucky for going under, that we live in a capitalistic hellscape, making this more relatable than ever before. <laughs> this was one of several important insights I discovered while researching the game, company and its launch in order to build a post-launch marketing strategy. I spent a healthy four hours in this and it taught me these three big things. Number one, they follow the marketing playbook of every indie game ever. They went to trade shows to talk to other developers, they tried to get their trailers in front of the eyes of gamers through established channels such as the Nintendo Indie World Direct, the PlayStation YouTube channel and of course using the indie developer Twitter algorithm. This may have had something to do with them being published by Team 17, who's, you know, probably done this with a variety of games they've published before. But this is a little bit like college. It's a common pipeline, it's gatekept by big actors, but it's not a guarantee for success. Number two. They launched with absolutely terrible timing. Between Game of the Year nominee Hades and cult favorite Spelunky 2. Both of these games dominated the indie game conversation during Going Under's launch window. These games were coming from established, beloved developers and both games not only lived up to expectations but exceeded them. 
leaving very little room for going under Agro Crab's very first game. And finally, three. They did make a post-release free update. This was a DLC called Working From Home, and it was capitalizing on the COVID-19 pandemic for relatability, considering many people were you know, working from home. And they even were referencing Lo-Fi Girl with Jackie's room here. So long story short, they had little to no channels targeting people who don't follow games media, which is the majority of gamers, by the way. And two, the people who do follow games media, they also lost out on because those two big other indie games took all that attention away during that time frame. So <laughs> who does that leave us with exactly? Now, unfortunately, we can't change the past. But trying to recapture this gamer audience might not actually be the best way to go about things based on my findings. So to introduce you to what I'm talking about, let's have Asia Matos talk to you guys a little bit about this. This is her guesting on the podcast, Everybody Hates Marketers. Have a listen. If you don't have paying customers yet, but you, again, going back to our assumptions, we kind of have a general idea of the pain that our product solves. And we also have a general idea of who has that pain and who we could potentially float that product in front of. Yes, I would say reach out to people who are using competitors. And if you don't have specific competitors, look at competitive behaviors. What are people doing instead of using your product? And you might say, but Magnus, they did. They did the same thing as all those other games. <laughs> well, let's hear what the pros say about doing the same thing as everyone else. It doesn't matter what your product is or what your business is. If you're entering a market, especially a competitive market, your biggest problem is awareness because it doesn't matter how good your product is. If, they're, uh, if it's cluttered, you're never going to compete with the big boys that are going to outspend you. They've been around for 10, 20 years. Like, forget it. It's like trying to introduce a new soft drink. Like, forget it. So what you need to do is something big, right, to get attention without spending money. Here's my take. I think AgroCrab looked at the wrong people. Take a step back and think for a second. What is going on actually achieving here? Fanworks Agretsko, Bo Burnham's Inside, and Harold Pushwagner's Soft City may be different mediums and come from different cultures, but they have one thing in common. They all criticize society. And after analyzing them individually, I found a few things that seems to link them and is integral to their success. These things being, they all have strong visual aesthetics, they expose social issues and are very relatable to people especially living in urban environments. Guess who else checks all these boxes? This means we simply need to capture the audiences who like those other properties in order to revitalize sales for going under. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on here for a second. First and foremost, how are you going to send that message out to people? Like people don't even realize the game exists. And also, even if the people do know about it, how are they gonna know it's for them? And there's tons of substitutes out there. Well, Going Under might be AgroCrab's first game, but it is masterfully crafted. In the first five minutes, you already know the humor and gameplay enough to understand whether this is for you or not, and if you play five more, you've tried your first dungeon, you've seen more of the story, and oops, Looks like you slipped down a slippery slide into the feedback loop, huh? So, if we can get people to just try, you know, the first five, ten minutes of the game, the people we're looking for will quickly realize that they need to play the rest. And you know, unlike those substitutes riffing on society, in this game, you get to tear things down. You know, I'm working alone on these videos, and I want to say working creatively is difficult. When it comes to ideas, I always, always, always recommend working in teams. And I say that as a creative communicator, both privately and professionally. If you don't have a team to work with, like myself, then do as I did and air your thoughts and ideas to trusted friends to get some new input. Because 
Ideas, again, they're just little nodes in your brain that you're connecting the dots over. And if you have more brains, the more dots you can connect in between each other, which, you know, just creates new solutions that you could have never thought of by yourself. That's why I always say in a team, if someone comes up with a brilliant idea, that is the team's idea. It's not an individual effort. It is everyone's effort together. With that said, here is what I came up with for a going under post launch campaign. Tell me, where do you find the most humble, compromise making, salary cut taking people who's fed up with authorities? Job hunters should maybe be renamed company prey as these people are at their most vulnerable, trying their best to hide it, much like the game's main character. And who better to hire these people than the game's ultimate villain, the mega corporation Amazon? Cubicle. You will not find much sympathy for bad work experiences at job interviews or trade shows, which is precisely why I suggest setting up a booth at a trade show. Nothing would stand out more than a playful, anti-corporate culture interactive booth in such a homogenous environment. Most booths will include one handsome PR rep, one booth with the branding and pamphlets, and if they're good, one complimentary corporate candy to draw in the masses. We will of course give these tropes our own spin. Our booth will advertise working for Cubicle's subsidiaries, which are the video game's levels, a tanked cryptocurrency, a contractor company paying by completed jobs, and a dating app when you can only communicate with emojis. To quickly connect the viewers to the experience, we'll invite onlookers to be screened by our AI for what cubicle subsidiary they would be a best fit for. We then have them go to the next room where they get a digital demo of what it is like to work for cubicle. The demo room layout is comfortable and corporate, and you get to sit, which is such a nice break from all the walking and talking that you typically see on conferences. Now, this demo is essentially just the first five minutes of the game and the intro sequence, making the audience truly feel like an impoverished intern. After completion of the demo, the new hires are given a business card for the respective subsidiary company that they were chosen for, which includes a call to action to purchase the game and or share a frustrating work that's experienced on social media, giving them a chance to win the game by using the hashtag. But did, did I get a job? <laughs> no. But you did get a taste of going under visual aesthetics, relatable humor, and validation in the societal issues the game brings up. Also, you interacted with the brand, and you even inserted yourself into the game world, as well as getting a little piece of that world to bring with you home. But we're not doing all of, you know, this just to sell the game to like, what? 200 people that's gonna come by within the day? <laughs> no, 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 no. We are milking this event for press exposure, goodwill, word of mouth, and above all, content. This will be shared on Instagram, TikTok, etc., and boosted towards their already established target audience. And speaking of targeting the audience online, let's step this up a notch. By running tandem virtual campaigns before and after the event on LinkedIn, Glassdoor and other places job hunters are, you know, the same concept. We have a job listing making fun of tropes of the platform and applying sends you to a landing page where you can play a demo of the game and or join the competition to win it. So by bringing validation, charm and honesty to a place which is, you know, typically pretty void of that, not only do we stand out, but... <clears throat> We reach the target audience at their most attentive. We also get our message across through contrast in the environment. We achieve the goal of having them play the game. And finally, create an opportunity to go viral with it. You want people to feel like they can tear down the system. You really can't follow the rules. All right, there you have it. That's my campaign idea for how AgroCrab could give going under another run for its money without spending crazy amounts of it. What I love about this concept is that it's easily scalable depending on your budget. If you have a lot of money, you can go harder. If you don't have that much, you can cut corners. I think it's worth giving it a try. If anyone from AgroCrab is watching this, 
I'd consider it. For people that was never targeted and doesn't know about the game, it doesn't matter if the game came out a few years ago, because it might as well not exist to them. Anyways, that's it for me, here's your ending. It's a little less dystopian here during daytime, don't you think? You know, the first clips you saw in the video today were actually filmed at my old workplace. And that was actually my first corporate job as well. So I had no idea what to expect from startup culture at all. So when I played Going Under, and that was, the game was parodying things that I had normalized and experienced on a daily basis, that opened my eyes and helped me quit that job far earlier than if I had not played Going Under. And likewise, I think Here! 